Welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 239. Today we're going to talk about meditation and the relationship between meditation and the martial arts and history and a bunch of stuff like that. I want to thank you for tuning in. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. You can find everything we do at whistlekick.com. You can find the show notes for this or any other episode at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. As you may know, these Thursday topic shows are often driven by listener suggestions. So if you have an idea, if there's a subject that you want to know my thoughts on, go ahead, write to me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, and maybe I'll bounce some stuff back and forth with you via email. We'll come up with a framework. Heck, maybe you can even help put the show together if that's something you're interested in. This company, this show, and the community around it are always better when we have input. So I thank you in advance for everything that you will do in the future. And I thank you for everything you've done in the past that has helped us get to 239 episodes. It's crazy. What's meditation? Meditation is such a vague term and it's a broadly used term. It's a term that can encompass everything from sitting quietly and just relaxing to a deep spiritual practice founded in decades of personal experience. It can be a lot of things in between. Of course, we're going to focus on how it relates to martial arts today because this is a martial arts show. And to be honest, that's the context under which I best understand meditation. I've dabbled in meditation outside of martial arts, but really, to me, meditation is part of my martial arts practice. If you research meditation one of the things you're going to find is that it's old. It's really old. And it's so hard to know where it comes from because it's that old. My guess, and this is kind of founded in the research that I've done, it really seems like it's tied in with religion. That, of course, doesn't make martial arts a religious experience, although for some people it can be. Why is meditation so closely tied with martial arts, especially if it has roots in religion and not martial arts specifically. Well, martial arts, whether or not it stems from monks, you know, we we have that that anecdotal story about Bodhidharma traveling from India to China and teaching the monks at the Shaolin Temple to develop their mind. And, you know, there's some conflicting history as to whether or not that happened. And I don't know that it really matters. Because either way, we've seen that there has been a strong adoption of the martial arts among monks, among people that are devout in their pursuit of personal development. Because what is martial arts if not personal development? We talk about that on that show, on the show fairly frequently. In the countries that we most often associate with having strong martial arts cultures have strong ties to religions that value meditation. So it's likely just that the two developed side by side and because they were developing in areas that people were doing both, they incorporated them. Of course, it's not hard to see the benefit that meditation can have within the martial arts, developing focus, uh, unfocusing pain, and the other benefits really do line up with the personal growth goals that most martial arts have. So there you have it. Of course, not there you have it in that we're done with this episode, but that's kind of the crux. That's kind of where we're going to stem from, the idea that martial arts and meditation have developed together over the years. And of course, we still see it today. Martial arts like Tai Chi and Qigong have meditation incorporated so deeply that it's hard to separate them from the practice. Japanese martial arts practitioners may be familiar with the concept of zazen and sitting in that practice, in that meditative space before and or after a class. There's a lot of science coming out around meditation, and there are a lot of indicators that there are some pretty profound benefits. Some of them start to get a little woo-woo, and since those aren't generally accepted scientifically yet, We're not going to talk about those. What we will talk about are six 
that I feel pretty strongly about that I feel that the science, the evidence supports. Relaxation, the reduction of stress, improving concentration, increasing happiness, slowing aging, and improving both cardiovascular and immune systems. There's a seventh, and it's one that, even though the science isn't fully formed, there's enough good stuff out there that I feel pretty strongly in mentioning it. Meditation can actually change the brain, the physical brain. Recent science shows that physical changes happen in key areas of the brain during meditation, including the thickness of the hippocampus, which is responsible for both learning and memory. This makes sense. If you talk to anybody that meditates frequently, that has made it a life practice, one of the benefits that they'll offer is that they think clearer. Their mind just seems to work better without all kinds of caffeine or drugs or anything like that. And that's something I can attest to. Meditation outside of the martial arts is something that has come in and out of my life over the years. But I know for a fact that when I am meditating, things just seem to fire better in there. Of course, this is a martial arts show. So how do we think about meditation as it relates to martial arts? How do we gain those benefits? How can meditation benefit our martial arts? You can get more out of your training with the ability to ignore distractions. If you're able to focus on what you're doing with your training partners or what your instructor is asking you to do or what you're doing in your own self martial arts practice, you're going to develop more skill, more technique by ignoring what's going on around you. You're going to be able to use your time better. Each repetition is going to be that much more effective, leading you towards the goal. Remember, it's not that practice makes perfect, it's that practice makes permanent. So the more you are focused on what you're doing, the more you're ingraining those motor patterns into your body. You don't want to spend that time ingraining poor motor patterns. You want to make the best techniques possible. Most of us train in some kind of environment where there are people watching and there's noise, maybe children or siblings, parents on the side of the the training floor, and sometimes they're distraction. One of the things I pride myself on when I'm training is that a loud noise or something else that happens around me, I let it go. I'm able to focus on what I'm doing while the majority of the class will stop doing what they're doing and pay attention to it. We can all rule out that, you know, the baby crying on the side isn't a threat, so we don't need to pay attention. We need, should be paying attention to what we're training. Meditation can help you with that. Meditation can help you develop faster reaction times by, by honing in on what's happening. Let's say you're sparring with someone. And as you've meditated, you've become better at focusing on what's happening with them. We have a finite amount of brain power, a certain amount that we can pay attention to at any given time. Well, when you're sparring in a class, there are probably other people sparring. They're, again, making noise, children crying on the side. And the more distracted you are, the less you're going to be able to respond to what they're doing, the less you're going to be able to see, to anticipate, to act effectively. But the more you meditate, the more you're able to focus, the better you get at acting in a way that almost defies reaction. Many of us that have been training a while have had moments where something seems to come at us that we avoided or blocked. And reflecting on it, you think, how did I do that? I had a moment like that just a couple of weeks ago. I was sparring with someone. It's the first time I'd ever sparred with them. They had a little bit of an ego. And that was coupled with a lack of flexibility that they compensated for by putting more effort into their kicks. They were trying to kick up to the head at, you know, kind of the outer edges of their skill, their flexibility. And if I had not moved my face back about the three inches that I did, I would have had a broken jaw. This was a really hard hook kick. And it barely avoided my nose. It was absolutely not a conscious thing. It was a reaction. And I know that it was because of my ability to focus on what was happening and just kind of allow my body to react 
in the way that it was it wanted, it saved me some injury. One of my favorite benefits to meditation under the context of martial arts is that it's something everyone can do together. It's something that regardless of your time training, your height, your strength, injury, everybody can do it. And everyone can do it together. It doesn't take up much space. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Meditation can happen when physical training can happen. Again, injury or overexertion or, you know, just being really tired. You can meditate on a plane. You can meditate in a car, assuming you're not driving. <laughs> I'm about to take a flight in a couple of days and I plan to meditate. And the final and my, my favorite benefit of meditation as it relates to martial arts is it can increase self-awareness. When we think about martial arts as a program, we'll call it, to develop yourself personally, being aware of who you are is a huge part of that. And by having more self-awareness, you can train more effectively. You can become not only a better person, but a better martial artist. And the benefits happen pretty darn quickly. When should you meditate? Well, the question is, when shouldn't you meditate? And really, there's no good answer to that. You can meditate before training, after training, as a break in between training. It's personal preference. There's really no bad time. In fact, there's science showing that breaks utilizing meditation have been incredibly effective for children. Well, I would argue it's going to be effective for everyone. How can you start working meditation into what you do? Well, it's pretty simple. You just have to pick a time. Develop a routine. People are creatures of habit. It takes about three weeks or so. I know there's some conflicting evidence whether or not it, that's the right amount of time, but let's say you give three to four weeks to meditation, even if it's just a couple minutes a day. You're going to see a benefit. It's going to get easier over time. I like doing it when you first wake up because you've set the tone for the day. You can do it just before bed. It'll help you relax and get better sleep. Or you can just do it, again, during a break, at lunch, sit in the car, something. Meditation has been shown to increase productivity. So taking out 10 minutes of work for 10 minutes of meditation, you're going to get that back multifold. And like I said, you don't have to do it for long. Just a few minutes to start with. My sweet spot is about 10 minutes. I get the benefit of meditation. It's a time that I find I can easily work into my day. And it's not so long that when I go into it, I feel stressed. Of course, there are apps, Headspace, Brain.fm, and dozens, if not hundreds of others that can help facilitate your meditation. And if you've struggled with meditation in the past, I'd urge you to check out one of these. They can be really helpful, guiding you through. And I can personally attest that Headspace, when I started with Headspace, I was actually paying for it for quite a long time, it took me from struggling with five minutes of meditation to doing 15, 20 minutes and not even realizing that the time had gone by. It was wonderful. Of course, I'm not going to get any kind of kickback for recommending them. So you can check them out or anybody else. Of course, I think that the real goal of this episode for the instructors out there, I'd like to encourage you to find a way to work meditation into your class. There are a number of ways you can do that. I grew up with a school that offered a few minutes of meditation, Zazen, before and after class, karate class. I loved it. Even at a young age, I loved it because I... I was a kind of a crazy kid. My brain was all over the place. And while I wasn't able to articulate why I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. The idea of a four, five, six-year-old who basically couldn't be controlled sitting quietly, I'm sure it didn't happen every time. But it's the one time of class that I don't look back and have memories of being disciplined often because I was able to focus. Maybe I lost that focus quickly, but I know, I, I, I feel very strongly that it was beneficial. I do it now, still. I meditate on my own before most of my training. It gives me a chance to clear my head and go into my training with the best attitude possible. 
I think a few minutes of meditation or quiet time, relaxation, whatever you want to call it, at the beginning and end of a martial arts class, it's a wonderful idea. For some people, it will be, it'll be the only quiet time they get all day. And I think that's something we can all agree is a good thing. Do you meditate? Is meditation part of your martial practice? If it is, I'd love to hear from you. You can write to me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, or you can reach out to us. We are at Whistlekick on social media. Feel free to leave a comment in the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're over there, join the newsletter list. We've just sent out a great coupon. It's going to have expired by the time you listen to this, but that's okay, because there will be another one coming at some point. We don't do them often, and they're not huge discounts, but we do love to reward our loyal listeners. I want to thank you for tuning in, spending some time with my voice today. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.